So this is the gentleman with the crazy furry hair who's going to tell me how much time I have left. So just get up and interrupt me if I'm going too long, OK? Please. Um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for letting me speak today, because I get to work with students all over this country, and um, it's the best job in the world. Um, I took advantage of my time in college and got very, very lucky to work with some very brilliant people uh, like Mr. Ryan Bolton, I'm not sure where he is, right over there, who uh, helped me put this together. And uh, this magazine was actually birthed out of hatred by myself towards the school newspaper. Because I hated the school newspaper so much and thought it was ridiculous, I felt instead of just complaining to my friends how dumb it was, why don't I just start one myself and make it better? Uh, and hopefully there's some other like-minded people out there. So when I got emailed to come and speak at uh, TED, and the topic was Rebel, uh, they had asked me to speak about Travis Magazine. And I was like, oh boy, I don't think I qualify as a rebel to come and speak about a magazine because anybody can do a magazine. And when I was talking to um, some friends about this, uh, especially teachers, they said, Steve, what do you go and tell people all the time when you speak at schools? And I say, listen, you're going to school to learn to fit in. And I'm here to tell you today to stand out. Because I need you guys to understand that you have a unique experience in your life to be something very, very special. It's just a lot of us don't believe we're going to be. And it's not something that there's a simple path that the math class taught you how to get there. So what is a rebel? A question that obviously we're all talking about, um, something that is obviously a major theme for today. And uh, a lot of speakers before me have been speaking uh, about this topic in very similar ways that I was approaching it. And I find it kind of funny because I went to Bing. I'm just kidding. I didn't go to Bing. No one goes to Bing. <laughs> All right, so I went to Google, all right? I, you got me. I lied. I lied. All right, all right. Uh, I can't wait to uh, finish this talk and go over to my email and see Microsoft's really angry email about that one. OK, so we uh, get these type of images when we Google. They were talked about earlier this morning. And it's funny to me, because this is a movie star, James Dean. Here's a musician. And here is a soldier. And according to my friends, because after Google, I felt let me down with the concept of Rebel, I emailed all my buddies and said, OK, guys, like, I need some inspiration here. Send me what you think a Rebel is. Um, you know, thinking that my friends were going to take this seriously. And I got, uh, Steve, I'm pretty sure this guy's a Rebel. <laughs> Star Wars was the big response I got. I also got Snooky, because I mean, if you're not on Jersey Shores, how could you not be a Rebel? And then I got another Star Wars one again with a little tie-in from uh, Quentin Tarantino. And then my personal favorite, The Llama. <laughs> and because this might actually make it to the internet, I had to alter my friend's uh, you know, language in the email. But this was actually really funny to me. It had my entire staff laughing, so I thought you guys might appreciate it. So I also jumped into the dictionary. And this is uh, from dictionary.com. You know, a person who rises in armed resistance against an established government or ruler. Sounds pretty intense. Is there anyone in here who is currently doing this? <laughs> Don't be ashamed. I just want to know. Because you can leave. I'm wasting your time. No? OK, let's continue. OK, so movie stars, musicians, and soldiers. Not too many of us are these things. And that is a problem when we start thinking this way. Somehow, the term rebel has gotten beyond us which is ridiculous in my opinion. And I think the complexity of this world makes it very difficult for you guys to understand that you can make it really, really simple and do something really, really simple and be amazing. The llama, he's simple. My friend made him amazing. I think it's time for a new rebel. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Does anybody know who this is? This is Rob Dyer from Skate for Cancer. He happens to be a very, very inspiring, amazing human being. And when I got asked to come and speak here today, I thought of Rob first for some reason. Um, I didn't think of myself as a rebel, but I sure thought Rob fit the bill. And I want to tell you Rob's story in a very, very quick way. Keep me on task. Well, I'm dependent on you. Um, because I really think that it really um, illustrates and narrates what a modern day rebel is, what a, um, a free radical mindset is, which is what you guys are. So I'm going to play a little video, and hopefully the sound doesn't blow your ears out. Can you tell us a bit about uh, your mom having cancer? I remember getting a phone call. She actually had like hours to live. And I remember that. That was 
I think that the first time in my life I actually realized what um, cancer was and what it has been doing to her and slowly um, killing her. And um, I got on the next bus back to back to Newmarket and uh, I don't know, it was the weirdest. I've never really, I've had people pass away in my life before that moment, but I've really had like that feeling in my life of like, you know, like taking like a, a three hour bus ride home thinking like, oh man, like, um, am I gonna make it home to see my mom before she dies? And uh, yeah, it was a pretty, it's a pretty uh, shitty, lonely feeling. Sorry to depress everybody. I promise this gets better. Um, Rob, like I said, is one of the most inspirational people I've ever met. And I was very fortunate to meet Rob at uh, a popular music venue called the Warp Tour. And uh, at that time, I didn't really know what Rob did and what he stood for and why so many people loved him. But he had done something that was really, really amazing um, because when his mother passed away, obviously it was extremely um, a terrible situation for him. It's like a terrible situation for most people who run into a scenario where they lose somebody to cancer uh, or know someone that has lost someone to cancer, which I'm assuming we all do. Um, Rob decided, you know what? I'm not going to be sad anymore. I'm going to I'm going to tell my friends I have a goal in mind and I think I can help this, which earned him this reputation of being the Terry Fox on a skateboard for Canada to skate against cancer. And that's exactly what he did and he started this mission from LA to Newmarket, that's 8,000 kilometers. And he decided, I'm going to skateboard 8,000 kilometers to bring awareness and cancer prevention to the world because I can't sit and be sad anymore. I'm losing every opportunity I have to make a difference. And the world is calling for me and I need to go do this. And this is what's incredible about human beings. We see a lot of stupidity all the time surrounded by us. We see it on Twitter nonstop. We see it even more on Facebook, stuff that's just ridiculous. But then you meet people like Rob who make you think differently. And they make you see what's possible and how we're not bound by anything, except for ourselves. So let's look at what Rob does. Skate for Cancer is really important. It's helping fight cancer in such a unique way. Everyone knows someone who's been affected by this disease indirectly or directly. He's, he's doing something that he, he believes in and he's, he just does it. You know, he thinks of the impossible and he just does it. Our focus is trying to be a support system for uh, people that are affected by cancer. needs people to be crazy and just do things that that are meaningful to them and, and a little bit outside of the box. I remember when they were cutting this short together and we got to that, that statement where the world needs people that are willing to think outside the box and they're willing to be different and they're willing to take risk. This is a picture of Rob after one of the most traumatic experiences he's had since he started Skate for Cancer and there have been a lot of uphill battles. To say what Rob is doing is easy is a joke. He is doing something that most people can't because their mind won't let them. Rob was struck by a car in Australia, straight skateboarding across Australia for his Australian tour. And when he got hit by the car, uh, I was talking to the gentlemen that were, were working with him and they said, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a testament to Rob's mindset that when he got to the, to the car and they said, Rob, we need to get you to the hospital, we think your leg is broken, uh, this is some serious damage here, and it's going to cancel the tour. And he responded by saying, I can't stop. I need to figure this out. I have to do this. And unfortunately, obviously, under the circumstances, that wasn't an option, but it didn't stop him. He waited his time, and he went, and he did things like tours with, the music, uh, with bands, and he started getting the word out there in a different way while his leg healed and while he was able to recoup himself because he was going to go back to Australia. 
And he was going to do things that made sure that people understood that his success and, and his message uh, by skating across Canada, it wasn't done. That wasn't it. From L.A. to, to Newmarket, it wasn't done. He had the rest of the world to conquer. And he goes to all of these venues and he inspires young people like yourselves. He has this mission in mind that cancer prevention is knowledge. That all of us possess the ability to do this to be able to work together, to be able to see things differently and stop looking at the world with such narrow vision. Because we do that. We do it every day. The video before I got up here was opening people up on subways to give high fives. Because you know what? That makes your day awesome. That's amazing. You know, standing with your pants off in a subway is a little different. But at least it gets you smiling and it makes you think differently. Um, Rob's rebellion against cancer has led him to skate 21,000 kilometers. Now, for those of you guys who love comparisons and don't really know how far that is, uh, the world's population to get around is 40,000, just over 40,000 kilometers. But there's big oceans there. So Rob's literally skated half the size of the world because of his beliefs, because of his um, life. These are the ingredients that I see when I see Rob. Every time we speak, and we speak all the time, because there are times when I'm down and I need him to pick me up, and there are times when he's called me and I've tried to be his support system. Big ideas, passion, courage, action, and determination. The cool thing about all of these ingredients is we all can contain them. Every single one of you guys in this room right now has these ingredients within them. But what you have to do is look at your life, look at the opportunities that present themselves in your life, and instead of going and playing Call of Duty at night, which I'm guilty of, start realizing where there's those opportunities that you can pounce on. Unfortunately, Rob lost his mom to find his opportunity. But the big thing that I love about Rob is the way he looks at things. He didn't look at his situation as poor me. He looked at his situation as I need to make things better for other people and I need to save as many people as possible through education and knowledge. And when I talked to him the other night, um, because I had called him and said, Rob, I really want to speak about you at uh, the TEDx Rebel conference. And he said, oh, OK, why? When's, when's that happening? And he was supposed to come today. And I, I said, well, listen, it's, it's happening um, on Thursday, and this is what I'm speaking about. And he said, why are you not speaking about you? And I was like, well, because I don't fit the bill. And he's like, Steve, if, you, if I have taught you anything, you need to stop eating what the world's feeding you, buddy. Just because you have a job during the day doesn't mean you can't be something bigger than that. And he's like, so when you get there, let these kids know that what I'm doing, any single one of them can do. And they all possess those ingredients we always talk about. And if there is an idea we're spreading, it's a simple one that says we can do anything we want to put our mind into and take advantage of any opportunity. We don't need to wait for cancer to hurt us to go after it. Thank you so much, guys.